Hello, hello, my fellow Geminis. Welcome to the reading, to the prognosis for the year ahead. Um, I'm not a Gemini rising, but I'm a Gemini by all my five personal planets. <laughs> so sometimes some things that happen, I feel them more as per Gemini than as per my ascendant, which is Libra. <laughs> But that's because I have a stellium, such a powerful stellium in Gemini. I have all my five personal planets in Gemini. If you have just your sun in Gemini, uh, not you will not feel them as much. Ascendant Gemini will feel them most, then moon Gemini, then sun Gemini. And as I said, obviously, if you have a stellium in Gemini, ah, you're gonna feel them, regardless of your ascendant. But it obviously helps if you have an air ascendant, like you're more prone to the air energies. Now, whew. For, uh, for us, something very interesting is gonna happen. Our ruler, Mercury, <laughs> and it's an astrology reading, but I'm using cards to show you because it's more interactive and playful and it's like we love playful things We love to be playful. So we're an air element and ruler of Gemini is Mercury <sighs> and He is the mind but thing is that when he goes retrograde this year in 2023 three times all times he's going to be in the earth element retrograde he's going to be in the earth signs retrograde and i find something like something very interesting is that in this deck and this this astrology deck it says mercury retrograde means reinvention <laughs> so ruler of the ascendant for Ascendant Gemini people and also for those with powerful Gemini placements in our charts Mercury is highly important But I'm gonna say ruler of the ascendant because this is primarily focused for ascendant Gemini. So a Ruler of the ascendant is gonna be retrograde in earth This means <laughs> this means heaviness for us because we are we're air and we don't like earth unless you are let's say ascendant gemini but you have some really powerful earth placements that may help you the mercury retrograde in earth elements in earth signs will not be that heavy for you but for those of us who are more prone to air who have more air placements when mercury goes retrograde in earth it's heavy i tell you every time mercury was retrograde in taurus i felt my head was made of lead I felt dragged down and pfft, it was it was horrid. So uh, yeah, it's it's not nice. But this is a message for us to go retrospect the, the our material reality. And lately with Satan, Saturn in Capricorn, sidereal Capricorn and tropical Aquarius, there's been a, a call for all people, not, not just one sign, all people, to inspect their material reality, especially since Satan has been squaring Uranus in Taurus, the first air sign. But let's just go ahead with the the prognosis for the ear head. Now, my technique, I look at the most distant planet 
first and then I, I take them in order and the most distant planet is Pluto now Pluto baby Pluto baby Pluto has been in Capricorn and thing is that baby Pluto uh, in Capricorn, this means our eighth house. A lot of crisis. And it's kind of intense for us. Because Pluto in the natural zodiac belongs to the eighth house. So, we don't have Scorpio in the eighth house. But right now, we do have Pluto transiting our eighth house. So he's quite comfortable there for us because he can do what he wants to do to bring crises that transmute us, that bring us heavy internal transformation. But since our eighth house is Capricorn, do you see the earth element reoccurring? It's Capricorn, so it's been fucking us up using the material reality which we don't really suffer that much <laughs> but something very interesting will happen exactly at the end of 2022 and the beginning of 2023 beloved Venus will be conjunct Pluto in our eighth house now both Pluto and Venus rule money. So, <laughs> babies, expect some windfalls. <laughs> expect some transformation, high transformation regarding our money. A money. And the sun will be transiting Pluto, no, we're transiting that house as well afterwards and also conjuncting Pluto so he'll be like an echo of the conjunction of Venus and Pluto now Venus is the ruler of our fifth house so beside the message of money happening from crisis and through the help of other people because eighth house is also the, the house of other people's and other people's money Venus being ruler of Libra, relationships, significant other, and Venus being ruler of our fifth house, which is the house of fun, of joy, of playfulness, of creativity, of hobbies, of children, and um, it is also the house of romantic affairs. So, <laughs> since we have Capricorn in that house, there is the message, Capricorn likes business. Capricorn is about business. Fifth house is also business, your own business. So for those of you babies who are willing on creating your own business, this is a terrific year. Because it starts like this, with this. But the Bing conjunction that I just mentioned. And if you are daring, planning, thinking of involving your significant other in this scheme, do so. Because it is like, this is what I'm seeing in this conjunction. It's... Ooh. It's nice. It's hyper nice. And then... Well, that's the message with Pluto. The thing is that he will move just a little bit towards Aquarius and then retrograde. And he, after retrograding, he'll station direct again and move direct again. So basically, he will transit three times in 2023 he will transit three times the last five degrees of Capricorn 
which means the last five degrees of our eighth house. Now, a secret I tell you, every planet when they go transiting, and especially the outer planets, the big players, the more distant the planet is, the more powerful it is. That's why, like, Pluto is the planet of power and is the more distant, the most distant planet. Now, <laughs> oh, what, what was I saying? I saw my tits on, on the screen and I got lost a bit. They're beautiful. <laughs> this is a Gemini. <laughs> okay. Uh, oh yeah, he will touch just a little bit on Aquarius, but not fully move into it. He will not really make the transition into our 11th house. He will still be in our, uh, sorry, not 11th, in our ninth house where we have Aquarius. He will still be in our 8th house. Thing is that I have the tendency of mentioning the native houses of Aquarius and Capricorn. Because Aquarius is 11th house and Capricorn is 10th house in the natural zodiac. So, hmm. Maybe this has an echo in our 11th and 10th houses, but I'll talk very soon about this. So he will be transiting the last five degrees of this house, eighth house for us. Sign Capricorn. Ugh, an ugly sign. We don't really like it. <laughs> and, um, well, as I was saying, when a planet is transiting the last degrees of a sign, they go crazy there. They they go crazy. They they're basically they want to fulfill their mission in that house. Every time a planet goes into a sign and a house, they have a mission there. So it's like they want to clean up the house and put everything in order the way they see that order for that house and Pluto is kind of chaos not really order so. <laughs> but uh, I'm expecting some blessings with the conjunction with Venus now next planet is Neptune that I'm looking at and we've been having fucking Neptune in our 10th house since 2011 and this meant illusions and disillusion dis disillusionment about our career our career path also authority figures in our lives in some way this transit of Neptune may be benefic because Neptune dissipates whatever he touches. So probably some authority figures have been dissipating from our lives. <sighs> I know from mine it did happen, but more like from the Ascendant. That's another story. That's for the Libra rising. But it's fucking annoying to have Neptune in the 10th house because everything about your career, you know, the 10th house should be a house of Earth. Talking about Earth again. Should be a house of clarity, a house of knowing what you do, house of rules, house of, you know. It's not mental clarity. No, but it's earthy clarity. Like, there are some rules you have to follow. We don't like rules. <laughs> but there, there's kind of like a thing happening there that people have a clear idea on it and they know what to do well we did not since 2011 we were lost in terms of our career now lately i can tell you from my personal experience that i've been getting a lot more clarity on what i should do with my career and it's the thing is that <laughs> neptune is in the last decan. The last decan means the last 10 degrees. 
he's at the 22nd degree right now when I'm speaking, when I'm recording. And he will move around there, but he's a slow moving planet, so don't expect too much movement. <laughs> he will not leave the sign in 2023. He will not leave our tent house. Don't expect uh, a lot of uh, grounded blessings, like really grounded blessings, unless we're talking about the ingress of Satan in that house. Oh, wait, yes. <laughs> um, well, the third planet in the row of the moon. The third planet I wanted to speak about is Uranus, but let's just keep talking about this area of our chart. <sighs> Satan has been in our ninth house for a while, and it's, it's a fucking cruel fate for us, because we're having Neptune in the tenth house. Not a good transit. Not a good transit at all. Almost at all. And we're kind of dreamy about our career, some of us. And But the thing is that 2023 is a year of putting those dreams into practice. I'm tying this with the conjunction of Pluto and Venus about business and money, making money together. Satan will move from Aquarius our ninth house into our 10th house of Pisces. This is highly significant. Now, say to have Satan in the ninth house is a fucking cruel fate because he's literally the devil. Wherever he goes, he oppresses, he delays, he takes away from you. He doesn't want you to be fulfilled. And the ninth house is the very house of fucking fulfillment. So, <laughs> We did not feel too much fulfillment the last two and a half years. It's been horrid. To have Satan transiting your ninth house, it's horrid. It's absolutely horrid. Unless you're an Aquarius rising and you've got Libra in the ninth house. That's the only way a Satan transit in the ninth house could not be like, like hell. Because Libra is the, the disciplining energy for, for Satan. Now, good news, he'll, he'll be leaving our Ninth house, finally, so we can have a lot more sense of purpose happening in our lives. Now, the Gemini is born, in, born throughout the day. And when I say Gemini, I mean Ascendant, Gemini, Suns, Gemini, whatever you are. If you're a day baby, Satan, like, a transit of Satan could be more constructive for you than for those born at night. Because Satan doesn't like the moon. And night babies are born are ruled by the moon. Day babies are ruled by the sun. So yeah, if you're a day baby, you can make this a lot more of a constructive transit after he fucking leaves this house for good. And, and hopefully he dies. <laughs> and um, I was talking about Ooh, Neptune in the 10th house, don't expect to grounded things, like grounded blessings in terms of your career and public life and uh, legacy, the legacy you give to the world. But with Satan moving in that house, there will be a fucking clash. It's the house of Pisces and... Well, Neptune is in domicile there, so he he's doing whatever he wants. What does he want? No one knows. Now, 
Satan wants things to get grounded. Neptune doesn't. So it will be a clash. Interesting for us, it will be exactly a Gemini thing, what we love. Opposites at the same time, extremes at the same time. This transit will mean both extremes in the same place at the same time. Just like us. Because that's what the Gemini energy is. <laughs> so, we're able to make a sense of it. Us and our ten personalities. <laughs> the thing is that... Neptune is in domicile there. Neptune is in Pisces. He's in domicile. He's powerful there. But Satan rules the 10th house in the natural zodiac. And this is our 10th house. So Satan as well is in kind of a comfortable place for him. Kind of a powerful position for him somehow. So it will be a, a fucking clash between these two. Now, those of you who also have natal Satan in Pisces, this means you're gonna have your Satan return. Things are going... For you, things will be far more intense than for any other Gemini. And, um... Good luck. That's basically what I'm saying. Good luck. Satan is the devil. I hope you get to have a constructive Satan return. But any any constructive things out of each of his transits will be seen only after he finishes that transit. Because that's his stupid energy of delays. Fuck you, Satan. Okay. Now, another, uh, I don't have time to speak about all the things happening in 2023. Oh, I have to keep the video within 30 minutes. But I'll, 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 I'll focus on the most important things. Everything is important. Something very interesting. The nodes will change. The, nor the, the north node and the south node will change signs. So they will come from Taurus into Aries, the North Node, and the South Node from Scorpio into Libra. So this means that we're going to have the North Node in the 11th house. This is good news. This is, this is good news. Because to have the North Node in the 11th house, the North Node likes the 11th house. And... He'll bring a lot of people to you and windfalls because the North Node likes to bring you windfalls because the North Node is a demonic energy which loves to keep you in the incarnate world. And in order to do that, he gives you desires and passions and thirst for life in the most demonic way. Not really the most, but um, a kind of a passionate kind of demonic. And you can make use of that. If you're aware, and if you're an old soul, and you stand in your power, you can turn that energy for your benefit, wherever the North Node goes. <laughs> and, um, something very interesting. In Aries, there is Chiron. And in Aries, there will be Jupiter as well. Jupiter will be transiting Aries as well. So we're gonna have this kablooey energy in the house of Kablooey. Because the 11th house is a house of Kablooeys. <laughs> it's a house of windfalls. And friends and hopes and wishes. So 2023 for Gemini's. Babies, this is the need to put your dream into fucking practice. Make them real. <laughs> and Jupiter will move throughout 2023. Also, from Aries, he will move into Taurus, which means our 12th house. So, a lot of spiritual stuff happening for the Geminis. And uh, some good, good rest happening that we definitely deserve. Especially after, ooh, 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 uh, uh, 
with this, I'm getting to add in some other things I wanted to talk about. Maybe I'll manage to talk about almost all of those things in the time span of 30 minutes. Maybe, 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 maybe. <laughs> okay. Um, we fucking deserve a lot of rest, especially since we've been having Mars transiting Gemini. Uh, don't get me wrong, I love Mars. And, and, and it's, it's, it's been intense to have Mars transiting Gemini. It's, 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 it's kind of like a this, but it's kind of like the this that we like. Because Gemini and Mercury are friends, Aries and... Uh, Gemini and... Yeah, uh, sorry, 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 sorry. Too many thoughts. <gasps> Mars and Mercury are friends, Gemini and Aries are friends. So, uh, we get along very well. These energies get along very well. And Mars has been making us very driven and determined. Determined. And very passionate and very driven to do what we want and to have things our way. Our way. <laughs> it's fucking amazing. But most of us might have been hyperactive thanks to this, or due to this, depending on what kind of effect that had on you. But, like, Mars had al has also been trained by Satan, so we kind of had the, the necessary... What's it called? Powerhouse. We've been powerhouses of, of determination and ambition lately. And... It's it's a good advice. It, it, it's wise to listen to my good advice to you now. To take this powerhouse of determination and ambition into 2023 and push forward with it. <laughs> and take advantage of that conjunction I talked about at, at the beginning of the forecast. Because it's a motherfucking blessing. Okay, Lilith will change signs from the crab into the lion. Oh, by the way, Mars will also change signs in March as well. Uh, at the time Satan moves signs and gets into Pisces. So, Mars, March is a, it's, it, it's a big deal in March. Many, many things are happening. Uh, lo a very powerful energy shift will happen at that point. Because Satan has been in that in Aquarius for a long time and moves into Pisces, and Mars has been in Gemini for a long time, and in March moves into um, the crown. <laughs> now, this means he'll move into our second house. So, there you go, baby. We can bring that determination, that spark, that ambition into doing something for our material possessions money valuables what we own because that's what the second house rules okay and um with the nodes changing as well i'm actually getting to speak about everything i wanted to speak about i'm grateful uh with the nodes moving from the axis of Tor the axis of Taurus Scorpio into the axis of Libra Aries. I'm talking tropical zodiac, not Sigerial. This means that they will move from where they are currently, meaning um Taurus, our twelfth uh, house. 12th house is a house of confusion, so you get the, so you see. Uh, our 12th and 6th houses, they will move into our 11th and 5th houses. I got lost again. <laughs> but I said them right. We have Aries, where the North Node will go in the 11th house. And we have Li uh, Libra in the 5th house, where the South Node will go. So this is where we'll be having the eclipses. So 
So brace yourselves because in 2023 eclipses for us are going to happen in the areas of friends, hopes and wishes, windfalls, networks, groups, benefits from our hard works. Uh-huh. And um, that's where energy gets, that's where there's an explosion, that's where the North Node is, and that's where there's a lot of focus and a lot of resources go there. And at the same time, there will be a downfall in the area of our fifth house. Hmm. <laughs> and uh, my cards fail. Uh, I, I I think this is an intuitive thing. I put the moon in the fifth house and I put the sun card the for, for the solar eclipse in the 11th house. So watch out for the solar eclipse in the 11th house and the lunar eclipse in the fifth house. Those are going to impact us. I don't know yet in what way. I told you this is an intuitive message. We're going to see at that point. So this is basically the major forecast for the year 2023. Put your dreams into fucking practice. Make them real. I love you, my brothers and sisters of that Gemini sassy energy. <laughs> Blessings.